that you are enlightened in an area doesn't mean you have become that area. You must be made. Are you following? So that is what we have been given. So the Lord has over the years walked with me and given me this revelation. He unfolded this thing that is needed. And not only that in knowledge and enlightenment, but in personality. You see, humanity is a sickness that needs to be healed. <laughs> and it is healed when you receive a certain virtue of the truth. As long as you're human, there's a way you cannot stop thinking. No matter how hard you try, you'll be strong on yourself, but you'll still be thinking depressive or all this kind of thing. But the day you are healed of humanity, the day the divine nature in you, by the revelation of the spirit in the word comes, it takes on a new dimension. Beloved in Christ, you are welcome to listen to this teaching by Dr. David Bindon. Listen attentively by the spirit as you feast on the truth of God's word. Wow, wow, wow. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's such a joy once again to welcome you to today's special episode of our favorite Good Life Devotion. And especially today's session of the NCC Hub Discussions. These have been amazing times. You know, the word of God is always fresh. We have, since this we began, going back to previous New Creation Conferences. And just looking at nuggets. And these are refreshing. These are refreshing. We do this so that the Spirit of God will reminister what he did in those years and at a higher intensity. And number two, to prepare us. You heard uh, the esteemed Reverend Amevo when he said that when NCC is coming, one of the ways he prepares is to expand his capacity. These Previous NCC discussions, they are to help you expand your capacity. And I'm excited. Why are we doing all this? Because all roads are leading to the Accra International Conference Center on the 14th and the 15th of November, just about two weeks away. 5.30 p.m. each evening. And on the morning of the 15th, that's the Friday, we have the Special Minister's Fellowship. And if you're a minister of God and you've been following, You need to come with all other ministers you are connected with. We are going to have a special time of fellowship. And we're going to be dealing with the subject of deadlessness. It's a journey in the word of God. God has said this time to roll away the covering of death that has covered the nations so that death can be swallowed up. It is a joy for you to be hearing us now and to be alive at a time like this and to be able to make it to the New Creation Conference. You can't miss it. So we are here again. I'm going to have a special discussion today. And I know the life and spirit is going to come to us in an amazing manner. I'm here with two mighty sons of God, and I'm going to get them to introduce themselves to you. And we are going to start off from there. But let's pray. Eternal and everlasting Father, we are excited once again to be set for the meal of your word in today's session. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Wow. So once again, on my immediate Right, I'll have introduced to us Prof. <laughs> Thank you so much everyone, for the opportunity. So I'm Reverend Dr. Bismakupukwa Sari. I'm a consultant physician and infectious disease specialist at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. And I pastor the early bed church wow. of the New Creatures Fellowship. Wow. So inspirational. And on my left, immediate left, Apostle. Thank you so much for having me once again. My mm-hmm. name is uh, Pastor Dr. Faisal Ajay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I pastor the Indigenous Assembly mm-hmm. of the New Creatures Fellowship, mm-hmm. and I'm a consultant orthopedic surgeon with the Trauma and Orthopedics Department of mm-hmm. the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. Wow. So let me start with uh, Reverend Prof. Um, 2018, what did the Lord share with us on day one, Just Flow? Wow. Mm. I mean, I can't stop saying wow because mm. that 2018. Mm the timelines on earth changed. Mm. Something big actually happened on earth. Mm. And if you speak to the sun, Mm. if you speak to the moon, Mm. if you speak to the creature, they will tell you what happened. Mm. At least I expected you to remember that. (laughs) (laughs) Something really changed on earth in 2018. Mm. Please flow. Because the dispensation Mm. of the manifestation of the 
begotten sons of God was launched in that NCC 2018. What do you mean by that? Look, hmm. there was an unveiling. Hmm. You see, God has been dealing with mankind over the years in many ways. Hmm. But in 2018, it is time for those who have been begotten by the word mm. to begin to live as such right here on mm. earth. To be as Christ on earth mm. as he, he is in heaven. Mm. So that year was, was amazing. It's like virtually every statement in that NCC is a bomber. Mm. We were so blessed. Mm. We were so set up. And I'm, I'm not surprised what's happening on earth mm. now. I'm not surprised that we have entered deadlessness. Mm. Because that, that year... <laughs> The unveiling mm. of the sons of God was yeah. made manifest. And right after 2018 or 2019, COVID-19. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people were surprised at our, the front we put up. But they didn't know that we knew that. You know, is this scriptural? Yeah. Bible talks about the children of Issachar. They understood the times. Who understood? They knew the times. So they knew what Israel ought to do. These things are not far fetched. God actually works in times and seasons. But those who don't know, they just think everything is just every day, every day. But when the timings change and you work with God, you get to know. Wow. You want to say something about that? Uh, thank you so much for, for, for the opportunity. I, mean, I was so blessed by what uh, Reverend Bismarck shared. That in, in that year's NCC, you know, the scriptures have talked about creation waiting for the manifestation mm. of the sons of God. And it has always been in scripture, <laughs> but it's not meant to remain mm. just like that in mm. scripture. It has to be realized. Mm. And that year began the unfolding of mm. the realization of that scripture mm. where the begotten sons of God were unveiled mm. to begin to now you know, reveal themselves to the creation that have been waiting earnestly for mm. them. And on the earth, in the universe, mm. something definitely changed. <laughs> times change. Times change. <laughs> Glory to God. You know, just as Jesus was mm. on earth mm. and time is referenced mm. before Christ after and, death. Mm. 2018 is a reference, it's a reference point. point. Wow. You know, when we speak like this, I'm talking about the sun, the moon, and the universe. Mm. Those who are looking for God bless me with Mary, bless, they don't understand what you are talking about. Like you are, what you are saying is ethereal. But you see, the day Jesus was born, mm. nobody may know, but everything else knew mm. that times changed. Yeah. When he died on the cross, mm. that one, even the son and, and the, the earth testified. But even they did nothing. They knew something changed. There are days like that in the realm of the spirit. Wow. This life is not meant to just be walking around on the earth as mere humans. We are dealing with realms. Mm. And everyone born again has access into these realms. You know, there was something you said, and I, the Spirit is leading me to probe there a little bit. You know, this scripture of Romans um, 8, 19. In years past, there are actually, Christians have been labeled as this sect of manifesting sons. And that sect, you know, and I see they are heretic groups of people. Because in the large understanding, it is when Jesus comes and people resurrect and their bodies change and they now look glo- glorious, then creation says, ah, these are the sons of God. So because of that, when you say that scripture is supposed to be fulfilled, I'm wondering, what's your basis for that? Th- th- thank you so much, Papa. Mm-hmm. You know, th- th- this is wonderful <laughs> because we are discussing NCC 2018 uh-huh. where the theme was, as he is, mm. so am I. Mm. And maybe let's read that scripture. Okay. First John chapter 4, okay. verse 17. Okay. And read the scripture. It says that hearing is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Mm. And this is where my emphasis lays. Mm. Because as he is, mm. so are we in, in this, this world. world. Okay. So, so when the scriptures say in mm-hmm. Romans chapter 8 verse 19 mm-hmm. that creation is awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God, mm-hmm. the question to ask is, who are these sons of God? Okay. Now, these sons of God are the ones who are begotten of God. Mm-hmm. James 1 18, mm-hmm. of his own will begot he has, mm-hmm. that we may become a kind of first fruit among his creatures. Mm-hmm. We understand that we are children of God, mm-hmm. born not by blood, mm-hmm. not by flesh, mm-hmm. not of the will of man, mm-hmm. but by God himself, mm-hmm. as John chapter 1 verse 13 tells us. Mm-hmm. Now, he now tells us that creation is awaiting the manifestation of these sons of God. So which presupposes that creation is not awaiting sons of God. Mm-hmm. The sons of God are already, already here. here. Yeah. 
It is their manifestation, manifestation that creation is waiting for. If you are a Christian, if you are born again, you are a son of God. And creation is waiting for your manifestation. Okay, that's where we are now. Yes. Go ahead. So, these sons of God are already here. Mm-hmm. Now, First John 4, 17 is telling you mm-hmm. that as Jesus is mm-hmm. now, mm-hmm. so are you in this world. Mm. So, what creation is waiting for mm-hmm. is the unveiling of the sons of God who are already here, living as Jesus. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Not when Jesus shows up. No, 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 no. This is a serious matter because in ages past, about 50 years ago, this was a serious contention. Mm-hmm. And I believe some people who are a bit elderly and know something about church history, they think we are also in that class, you know. But we are not just resurrecting all things. These are biblical truths. You want to say something? You know, I, I, I was, I mean, it's the scripture. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. let's follow what the scripture says. Okay. It says. It says, as he is, so are we in, in this world. Okay. It's not futuristic. Mm-hmm. How is Jesus now? Mm-hmm. If you can answer that question, mm-hmm. then it's obvious how we should be living now. Jesus is not living a life where he's, he's not being manifested. Yeah. So why should we live that way? Now, even if you, the, you argue, read forward. Uh, yeah, and, uh, okay, Romans 8, no. Okay, let's Romans go back to Romans 8, 8 uh, and read from uh, verse 19 where we, the whole thing started from. Yes, please. And go down a bit to about 2021. 20, Let me see something. Yes, sir. So Romans chapter 8 from verse 19 mm-hmm. says, For the earnest expectation of creature, mm-hmm. of the creature, mm-hmm. waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Mm-hmm. For the creature was made subject to vanity, mm-hmm. not willingly, mm-hmm. but by reason of him who had subjected the same in mm-hmm. hope. Mm-hmm. 21, Mm -hmm. because the creature itself Mm -hmm. also shall be delivered Mm -hmm. from the bondage of corruption Mm -hmm. into the glorious liberty of the children of God. So why is creature waiting for the manifestation of sons of God? Not just say, hey, sons of God. (laughs) They have a stake. (laughs) They are in bondage. Just like a human being without Christ is in bondage and gets born again by the gospel. Mm. Creation is also waiting for its gospel. Mm. And its gospel is the the manifestation of the sons of God to also be born again. Mm. And the Bible says that it is when things are restituted that Christ will come. Mm. By the time Christ will be coming, (laughs) creation, Mm. if it's only a one day shouting, yeah, then what's going to happen to creation? Wow. But see, when people are thinking about food, traveling, uh, they are not thinking about creation. Oh, that's why they should come to the NCC. <laughs> that's why they should come to the NCC. Tell somebody something. <laughs> coming, <laughs> come to, coming to the NCC will change your life forever. Mm. Your vision will be elevated. Mm. Vision will be elevated. Mm. Because this thing is not about what I can get. Mm. You have everything already. Have what everything. else can you get? Oh, <laughs> Our time is up. So let me give you 30 seconds. 30 seconds to say something that will go. Wow, <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much, Papa, for this opportunity. Mm. You see, in all of this... Mm. You must understand that God is a master planner. Mm. And we are excited about all this because, you know, we are blessed to know what God's plan is. Mm. And all that is happening, all that we are sharing with you is the unfolding of a grand plan Mm. of God. And this is exactly where the born again fits in. Mm. So you are not just born again to be excited just to go to ah. church and have some little money for yourself and your family travel mm. around. No, 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 no. And die and go. And die and go. <laughs> if people don't really even need to be born again to experience oh, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So sometimes what we are saying, come to church and be healed. Come to church and prosper. Somebody, somebody is, doesn't know Jesus. Yeah. He can get healed. So he doesn't understand yeah, why he should come to Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> there is more to the matter. Are you done? Exactly. Yes, yes. So, so that, that is the essence mm. of the new creation conference. Mm. It lifts your vision mm. and you now begin to think as God, mm. talk as God, mm. and act as God. It lifts your vision. You begin to think as God, talk as God, and act as God. Because indeed, mm. you are God mm. in nature. Prof, give us 30 seconds. Wow, thank you so much again. <laughs> wow, wow, mm, wow. Mm, 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 mm. You cannot be anywhere else but mm. the Accra International Conference Center on the 14th and the 15th of November. Mm. Why? Because more of who you are in Christ will be rolled out to mm. you. You will begin to stand out as a son of God who is living exactly as Christ here on earth. Mm. As you are launched in, into NCC 2024. Mm. Wherever you are on this planet, if you can't physically be available, and we urge that everybody makes it. Mm-hmm. But if not... We are going to have many platforms to stream on. Make sure you are connected mm. because your life will never be the same. If you can be there, you must be connected. Your life will never be.
did the same. Wow. We are still on the same journey of the NCC Hub discussions. And I'm blessed to be here once again with mighty sounds of God. So I'm here once again and I would like them to introduce themselves to us. So on my right, we have Reverend. Well, thank you so much sir, for the opportunity to yeah, be on bless. set with you once bless. again. I'm Reverend Dr. Felix Kings Yopuni, the head pastor of the New Creatures Fellowship and the CEO of the Final Global Movement. Oh, Reverend, you're most welcome again. We have been enjoying you for the past days. and We know today is not going to be an exception. It's going to be better and deeper. On my left, we have a steam pastor. Can you introduce yourself to us again? <laughs> Thank you so much, sir, for the opportunity. So I am Pastor uh, Dr. William Kwesi Gani, mm-hmm. and I pastor the Kolegolo Main English Church, okay. and I'm also a consultant hematologist at the Ghana Institute of Clinical Genetics of the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. Hallelujah. So, sons of God, welcome. Today is going to be awesome. We have been trying, we have been trying to take a look at what we discussed in previous editions of the New Creation Conference, and sometimes, you know, just a statement. The statements are so loaded that when we try to go deeper, we are unable to come. But, you know, we are people of the Spirit, and we believe that the areas that the Spirit drives us into, those are the areas we bring to you in every discussion, no matter which area He leads us. And we believe that in all the episodes we have had, you heard what you needed. One, to receive a reministration of the life and Spirit that we had in those years. And number two, to expand our capacity as we prepare for the new creation conference in just about two weeks from now. Right, so today we'll try again to uh, enter into the new creation conference as it was in 2019 and then look at what the Lord ministered to us and how we can learn and what we can see from there in today. So let me start with you, Reverend Felix. Uh, What happened in 2019? Tell us, where were we and what did the Lord share with us? Well, thank you so much, sir, for the opportunity once again. Yeah. By experience, um, we've realized that every edition of the New Creation Conference is a build-up on the previous mm. edition. Mm. So, 2019 wasn't an exception. Mm. In 2018, we realized that as he is, mm. so are we. And right after that, we were ushered into um, COVID. There was a pandemic, mm. you know. Then, In that particular year, we talked about the game-changing key. Mm. That was going to change our perspective when it comes to our entire work Mm. in Christ. Mm. And one of the aims of that year was to establish us in the reality of this message. Mm. You know, and I was so blessed by the day one um, edition because you, the Holy Spirit made us understand that there's really no controversy in God. Mm. There's no controversy in the body of Christ. Mm. There's no controversy in the Bible. <laughs> if you read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3, mm. endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond, bond of, of peace. peace. There is one body, mm. in the verse 4, mm-hmm. and one Spirit, mm-hmm. even as ye are called in one hope mm-hmm. of your calling, mm-hmm. one Lord, one faith, mm-hmm. one baptism, one God, and Father of all who is above all and through all, and in you all. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, there's really no controversy in the Bible. Mm. But many have not understood that in God's dealing with mankind, God reveals knowledge about himself in stages. Mm. So, this divine principle where God reveals knowledge about himself from one level of truth to the next higher level of truth until you come to the full truth Mm. It's what we call progressive revelation. Mm. Many are not aware of this. Mm. So, because they, they, they are not aware, to them, there are a lot of controversies. Mm-hmm. But if, if you had been in that New Creation Conference, you would have understood mm. that really, there's really no controversy mm. in the Bible at all. Mm. To the babe, God contradicts himself. Mm. Right? They will say, how come God, the same God is the one who um, brought the law and the same God brought grace. Is he mm-hmm. contradicting himself? Mm-hmm. But having been that that year's new creation, come, I realized that, wow, really, there's really no controversy mm. in the Bible. Mm. It is a matter of God revealing himself from truth to truth mm-hmm. until the full and complete truth is revealed. It's revealed. Wow. For instance, mm. God revealed himself to Abraham mm. that I am El Shaddai. Mm. 
he revealed himself to Isaac, Jacob, as El Shaddai. But when he came to Moses, mm. he said, I am the I am that I am. Mm. I am. I am Jehovah, the self-existing mm. God. Why? Because during Moses' days, there were a lot of gods mm. around. And God had to let them know that he is not just one of the gods, mm. but he is the all-existing God. So he says, I am Jehovah. Mm. For by my name, the fathers had not known me, mm. but I am. Mm. Hallelujah. Praise you God. know, so God, so if, if you understand that God reveals himself in in progression or yeah there's he reveals in from truth to truth the rather that there's really no controversy mm. another instance um when it comes to the revelation of god's righteousness mm. on mankind god was god is trying to reach out to men mm. but he started with israel mm. and he made them um attain righteousness by by the law mm. he doesn't end there he moves on mm. And after Jesus is coming, hmm. you attain righteousness by faith. faith. It doesn't mean that what they attained in the law was error mm-hmm. or, or was an error. Mm-hmm. God had moved on, mm-hmm. you know, so from if, righteousness by works, works through the law, to, ra- exactly. to righteousness by, by faith, faith in the finished works exactly. of Jesus Christ. Exactly. Wow. Mm-hmm. You know, so you, I mean, amazing things you said there, you know, progressive revelation mm. Mm. i think i said it before that we all need some element of conservatism so that we are not moved from the foundations of our faith but when you become overly conservative you will never accept the truth of progressive revelation because to you what god said some time or some centuries or millennia ago is still what it is there are also those who don't understand um the principle of progressive revelation. They think that because mankind moved from uh, primitive man, medieval man to postmodern man, then God is also changing like that. You know, so they they also take the thing off, and then so. But the reality is in the scriptures, like what he just gave. God is the one who reveals Himself in bits, and He has done the full revelation in a particular um, area. There was something. Uh, you said when um, you were talking about the controversy, seeming controversies, and that there's no controversy in the body of Christ. You know, sometimes uh, I see a few things and I, I see maybe some of our brethren want to make themselves judges. And uh, I see if the body of Christ is theirs and they need to correct the body. <laughs> I mean, if God calls you to do that, no problem, just go ahead. But you see, where God sits, if you sit there, there are some things you think they are errors. And he commissioned them. And he commissioned them. <laughs> you see? So, for instance, what we teach people in class one, we don't teach, we don't teach people the same thing in the universities. And we understand that it's a matter of level. It doesn't mean that what you taught them in class one was wrong, even though it was much limited in terms of content. And God knows. And God deals with people at their level of understanding. But we think that, oh, the way it was here, it must be the same way here, it must be the same way there. And sometimes we make mistakes of calling people wrong when they were actually sent by God. <laughs> So if you grow to understand that there is no controversy, I, mean, I, I think the simplest uh, Christian life is know God for yourself. When you know God for yourself and you walk in your path, the real people who are walking with God, they are very united. But those who are walking partially with another leg somewhere, they get confused. And they want the church to be like the world. They want the world to be like the church. And they get confused. But the body of Christ is solid. The body of Christ is united. You may seem to see differences. It is on the side of men that there are those differences. On the side of God. says the foundation of the Lord stands sure. And the Lord knows those who are his.
Wow, praise the Lord. It has been an amazing NCC Hub discussion. We just took a look at what happened in 2019. It's like one of the reasons why you must be at the New Creation Conferences. Because like something like Progressive Revelation, it opens you up to know how to view other Christians who don't necessarily share the same views with you. It's not like everyone that doesn't agree with what you are saying is wrong. Yes, of course, there is always the wrong aspect. But leave that to God. God said, the test and the wheat. He didn't say, go approaching the test. Say, leave them. I know what to do at the right time. You know, but if you're, if you're not exposed into these kind of things, you have a much more confused Christianity. So if you come for NCC 2024, for instance, the issue of whether you should live or die, or wait for resurrection and all that, they'll be clarified unto you. <laughs> and you wouldn't have an issue with when others are applying the word of God at a higher level. Anyway, so Pastor Gandhi, you were there in 2019. What was the Spirit leading you to emphasize for us from that conference? Well, thank you so much for this opportunity. I've been so blessed mm. by the fact that there's no controversy mm. in the body of Christ. Mm. And like you said, the body of Christ is solid. We are solid. <laughs> That's my takeaway <laughs> Hallelujah. for today's uh, <laughs> good life devotion. Mm. The body of Christ it's is solid. solid. Mm. Mm. So, um, on the day two... Maybe for, at least for those who weren't at the mm-hmm. 2019 New Creation Conference, you went ahead to explain to us what that game-changing key was. Mm. And you said that the game-changing key was to know the ultimate purpose mm. for Jesus' coming. Mm. And when you know the ultimate purpose for Jesus' coming, mm. it will transform the quality of your Christian mm. life. You know, So... Do you know the ultimate purpose for which Jesus came? Yes, sir. What is it? All right. So, we were excited and we're uh, happy to be at a new creation conference Mm -hmm. because you told us exactly what that was. Mm -hmm. Now, the ultimate purpose for Jesus' coming Mm -hmm. was for the adoption. For the adoption. You know that, right? Yes, sir. I'm asking because of the statement you made. Mm -hmm. You said, when one knows the ultimate purpose for which Jesus came... It will transform his Christian life or something. And I asked, do you know it? And he said, yes. And you stated it. It is for adoption. How has that transformed your Christianity? Well, I think you said. Your knowledge that Jesus came for adoption. All right. But see, these things we are sharing with you. (laughs) I said somewhere that it's not that we don't have anything to do. And we just bought some airtime, some more media. And then we are here to just uh, uh, throw some darts into viewers or listeners or readers' eyes. No. We're dealing with reality. You see, if you hang around, you will know that we are what we are talking about. And that is real living. You see, we are not here to just rattle to you academic theories. So he said it. He must prove to you whether what he's telling you is the reality. And I'm asking him, how has that been a game-changing key in your life? All right, thank you, sir. So, according to the scripture, mm. when you read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, mm. The Bible says, according as he had chosen us in him mm-hmm. before the foundation of the world, mm-hmm. that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Mm-hmm. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, mm-hmm. according to the good pleasure of his will. So this was the reason Jesus came. Mm-hmm. And the adoption was accomplished through giving us eternal life. Mm-hmm. That is God's life, mm-hmm. which was also promised before the foundation of the world. Mm-hmm. Now, Knowing that this is the ultimate purpose, Mm -hmm. I know that if I have received Jesus, Mm -hmm. then I have really received eternal life. Mm -hmm. Eternal life is God's life. Mm -hmm. So, you may ask someone, why did Jesus come? Mm -hmm. And the person will say that, oh, Jesus came to die to save us from our sins. Mm -hmm. For that person, the Mm -hmm. sins being forgiven Mm -hmm. is what the person knows. Mm -hmm. For another person, it's Jesus came so that I will be blessed. Mm -hmm. So, every day the person lives as someone who seeks blessings from God. Mm. But for me, mm. I know that I have been adopted as a child of God. So, beyond my sins being forgiven, beyond living to prosper, beyond every other thing, this made you know that you have the life of God, you are an adopted son of God. Now, when we talk about adopted sons of God, some don't understand. Because nobody wants to be an adopted son. Everybody wants to be the real son. 
what is this adopted sons of God? Because we are not saying that we are not really real children of God. We are just adopted sons. Because in the normal understanding, when someone adopts somebody, that person is not really his biological child. Mm. So when you say, you know yourself as an adopted son of God, what, does, what do we mean? Does it mean that we are not really true sons of God? God just adopted us, you know, and conferred on us some privileges of his sons. Th- thank you, sir, once again. Yeah, bless. So, about adoption, mm-hmm. there are two kinds of adoption. Mm-hmm. We have human adoption. Mm-hmm. So, a couple can, um, by legal means, get someone's child mm-hmm. and confer on the person the rights and privileges of a, of a child. Mm-hmm. So, when you do a DNA test, mm-hmm. you realize there are two different beings. Mm-hmm. You know, but this is not the same as the adoption we are talking about. Mm-hmm. This is about divine adoption. In divine adoption, God gives birth to you. Mm. You are begotten by him. In John chapter 1, verse 12 and 13, mm. it says that, but as many as received him, mm-hmm. to them he gave the power to, to become, become sons of God. So it's a becoming mm. sons of God. And these one are those who have believed on his name. Mm-hmm. Then he tells us in verse 13 how that happened. Mm-hmm. See, these ones are born. Mm. Not of the flesh, mm. nor of the will of man, mm. nor of blood, nor of blood, mm-hmm. but they are born oh of God. God. So it is God Himself who is giving birth mm. to me, the mm. child of God. Mm. And in that process, He imparts His, his very, very life. Kind of life. So if you do a spiritual analysis mm. of God mm. and you do the spiritual analysis of the child of God, mm. it is the same. Do you hear that? So in the adoption we are talking about, it is not like in the human case. Here we are talking about the adoption of mankind into divinity. Mm. So it is the human that is adopted into mm. divinity. You understand? So it is not a human adopting another human just like a child, but not a child. Here is one kind mm. being transmuted mm. into another. So one kind that was not, now that is. Mm. That's divine adoption. And this was God's plan for mankind when? Before the, the world. Of the world. Mm. This is deep. Our time is up. So you see what this has done in your life. Why might somebody be at a new Christian conference? What? I mean, just from your heart, if this is what it did for you, you should have something to tell somebody. Wow. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Mm. Being a son of God mm. is big. Mm. Is really big. Mm. And for all these years, the earth has not really known mm who sons of God are. Mm. But, Mm. in divine timing, Mm. God has brought the game-changing key to Mm. the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And this game-changing key is the new creation conference. Mm. Because you are to reign in life. Mm. Being a son of God, you are born of God. Mm. God gave birth to you. You have his very life. Imagine being a child of God. Even humans want to take very good care of their children. How much more you who are a child of God. God thinks big about you. And what is more, God looked around and he couldn't have given you anything but his own very life himself. That's the biggest thing that you could have received. And that is why you have to come to the new creation conference. Because then you will be taught how to exhibit this divine life that you are. Because whatever God is, you are. Mm. God is holy, you are holy. Mm. God is righteous, you are righteous. Mm. God is love, you are love. Mm. God is beauty, you are beauty. Mm. God is might, you are might. Hallelujah. I mean, you Ko ought to be at the new creation conference. Whatever God is, you are. Because he has begotten you after his own kind. Right, so I'm here once again with two of them and I've been introducing them to you. So I'll allow them to introduce themselves to you. On my right, we have... Reverend Prof, once again, introduce yourself to us. Well, thank you so much sir, for the opportunity. Yeah, I'm Reverend Dr. Bismarck Kukwasari. Mm. I'm the pastor of the Early Bird Church in the New Creatures Fellowship. I am also a consultant physician and an infectious disease specialist at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. Reverend, thank you for coming. Thank you, sir. God bless you. you. We have been blessed and we know today is going to be another flow. Hallelujah. Right, on my left we have... Thank you, sir, for the opportunity. I am Pastor Dr. William Kwesigani, also the pastor of the Collegono Main English Church and also a consultant hematologist at the Ghana Institute of Clinical Genetics of the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. Hallelujah. Glad to have you. Your mention of genetics just blessed me again because it's all about parents, their genes and how they pass it on to their children. Mm. What goes on well and what doesn't go on well. 
<laughs> and here we are talking about spiritual genetics. Mm. Wow. Many really don't know that this is really what it is. Mm. They don't know. Mm. Let's start out with a certain scripture. Prof. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Read for me verse 12 into verse 13. Wow. Mm. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I love the spiritual genetics. <laughs> <laughs> but as many as received him, mm. to them gave he the power mm. to become the sons of God. Mm. Even to them that believe on his name. Mm. 13. Mm. Which were born, mm. not of blood, mm. nor of the will of the flesh, mm. nor of the will of the man, mm. but of God. So, they became sons of God because they were born. And I'm amazed. God himself took time to bring some important exclusions. He says, when I say those who received my son became sons of God, I don't want you to be confused. Wow. Let me clarify it. When they became sons of God, I'm not talking about sons of God through the birth of blood. Wow. I'm not talking about sons of God through the birth of the will of man. Mm. I'm not talking about sons of God through the birth of the will of flesh. Mm. What I want you to know is that when I said as many as received him, they became sons of God. I'm talking about the two that I gave them to them. Mm. Hey. <laughs> wow. <laughs> What's the primary means of imparting genetic transmission to children? All right. So... And you get genes from a man mm. and a woman. Mm -hmm. And the genes from the man is through the sperm. Okay. And that from the woman is from the egg okay. or ovum. Okay. And they contain the genetic material. Okay. And so when the seed and the sperm mm -hmm. and then the ovum meet, mm -hmm. you have a combined cell formed. Mm -hmm. And therefore that cell mm -hmm. carries all the genetic material that will express the next the being. next being so the next human that is produced by the combination of the 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 egg mm. and the sperm the person's genetic makeup is a combination of these things yes. from the mother and the and father, the father. Yeah. that's what genetics teaches yes. so that child that is born by these things is made up of that yeah. that's what gave them so yeah. uh, and that's how the child is conceived and born and God tells us now <laughs> woo, that we are born Ooh. by him. Now, let's look at what is our genetic makeup. Yeah. What gave birth to us? Mm. James 1.18. Wow. James chapter 1. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you go to First Peter 1.23. Mm. Verse 18 mm -hmm. says, Of his own will mm -hmm. begot he us, mm -hmm with the word of truth <laughs> that we should be a kind mm. of first fruits mm. of his creatures. Now, we are doing spiritual genetics here. Uh, exactly so, <laughs> before you read this one, let's go to 1 John 5. 1 1 John chapter 5, the verse 1. Mm -hmm. The genetics is getting deeper. <laughs> <laughs> Whosoever mm -hmm. believe that Jesus is the Christ mm -hmm. is born of God. So, we are talking about if you have believed that Jesus is the Christ, mm. you are born of God. God. How did he give birth mm. to you? That's all Pastor Ghani just read. Of his own will, he gave birth to us by the word. word. The word of truth. Mm. Now we just realized that biologically, mm. your genetic makeup is a combination of the seed mm. from your dad and your mom. Mm. And then you are that. That expressed you. Now, in genetics, mm. <laughs> what's the relationship mm. between a person's genetic makeup and the genetic makeups of the parents? Of the parents. So, mm. it is so succinct that mm -hmm. even in terms of disputes, mm -hmm. if you want to find out who mm -hmm. is the biological father mm -hmm. of a child, mm -hmm. You take the father's sample mm. and you analyze it. Mm. And whatever you find there, you find the same thing in the child. Mm. So every person mm. <laughs> is the expression of the genetic makeup of the one who gave birth to yes. him. So in other words, what you find in the father mm -hmm. is what you find in the child. Yes, sir. And what is in the child is the expression of what is in the father. Yes, so this is a, a person, a guru <laughs> a in genetics. genetics. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay? But there is spiritual genetics, Aye. which people don't know. And what to bring your mind there. Aye. Okay? So now, so we establish that the child's genetic makeup, even if you want to prove, you go to the father yes. and you get the same. Yes. Yeah. So if you have a child, you know the father's genetic makeup. Yes. If you have the father's genetic makeup, you can tell the child's genetic yeah. makeup. So now, Prof now raised to us, and then first John 5 says that we are born by him. So, so, so okay. even before Prof comes, mm-hmm. so that's how come mm-hmm. you look at the child mm-hmm. and the father's physical appearance mm-hmm. or the mother's physical appearance, mm-hmm. you can see those same traits in the, in child. the child. And you can look at the child and say, ah, mm-hmm. this person gave birth mm-hmm. to you. It's because of the genetics, mm-hmm. the genes mm-hmm. that is expressing mm-hmm. themselves. That is why if you make a mistake and you look like somebody's father. Mm-hmm. Hey! <laughs> Raising big questions. <laughs> big questions, right? <laughs> yes, sir. All right, and this is because we believe in this principle mm. of genetics. Yes. Now let's go hey. to First Peter one twenty three. Mm. Wow, spiritual genetics. <laughs> Be <laughs> born again, mm. not of corruptible seed, mm. but of incorruptible, mm. by the word of God, mm. which liveth and abideth forever. So James one eighteen told us that we are born by the seed of the word. Mm. Now, First Peter one twenty takes us further to mm. tell us certain features. He mm. said that this word of God that we are born by mm. is not corruptible. corruptible. <laughs> <laughs> so the seed that gave birth to us is not corruptible. Wow. So if you are looking for incorruption. Mm. You, you find, find it, it now. Yes. So let's go now and look at the first of us. So now let's go to First Timothy six sixteen. Take it from verse fourteen because this is a good advice. So want to be biblical authority. Take it from verse fourteen. They know who we are talking about. Mm. Verse fourteen, huh? That thou keep his commandments mm-hmm. without spot, mm-hmm. unrebukable, mm-hmm. until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Until the appearing of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Now go, huh? Which in his times mm-hmm. he shall show. Mm-hmm. Who is the blessed and only potentate, mm-hmm. the King of Kings mm-hmm. and Lord of Lords? Okay. Uh-huh. Who only <laughs> has immortality, mm-hmm. wow, dwelling in the light uh-huh. which no man can uh-huh. approach uh-huh. unto, mm-hmm. whom no man hath seen mm-hmm. nor can see, mm-hmm. to whom be honor and power everlasting. Wow. Amen. Wow. What is one of the features of the one who gave birth to us? Immortality. Is immortality. Only. Hey. He only. Mm-hmm. Only. He only has immortality. immortality. Wow. He only has incorruptibility. Oh, yeah. And now the seed of immortality mm-hmm. is what produced us. Oh, yeah. So, do we have that genetic makeup in our father? Yes. yes. Did the scripture say the seed that gave birth to us have that thing? Yes. So, what do we have? We have immortality. Incorruption. Corruption. And, 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 and I'm not surprised. Mm-hmm. Since as he is, so, so are, are we, we in this world no right now. No, the rapture comes. No, 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 no. Right now. Uh, you can't miss. <laughs> <laughs> you can't miss New Creation Conference 2024. Now, you see, when you read this, you somebody somebody but the Bible says, he only. Mm. Okay. The Bible says, he only. Yes. Where, what, with whom was he comparing? He said that he dwells in light that no man mm. can see. Yeah. No man can approach. And he says that no one can see. Mm. John chapter 14. Wow. John 14. John chapter 14. <laughs> um, go quickly to um, verse 19. But let me take this one. Okay. Yet a little while. Mm-hmm. And the world seeth me no more. Mm-hmm. But ye see me. Uh, mm. So who is the one that cannot see Jesus? It's a human. It's the world. <laughs> No man can see. He didn't say no. <laughs> okay, go. Well, I print it up. The word said me no more, huh? Because I live, mm-hmm. ye shall live also. You listen. I said the word said me no more, but ye see me. So when he says no man can see, it's not you can't see. So he alone has matter. No, those who are outside the bracket of divinity, who are humans, they can't see him. They can't approach his light. They are not immortal. But all these things, they belong to us and him. Wow. Is the divine we can see him? Hey. We are lied because yeah. he's light. Yeah. Whatever he is, we are. This is spiritual genetics. Wow. And this is why deathlessness hey. is yours. Hey. You can't miss a journey along oh, yeah, this yeah, line yeah, yeah, on yeah, the 14th yeah. and the 15th of November. 
<laughs> hey, where are you going to be? <laughs> don't let them they come and tell you on social media. Be there yourself. Now, with all we have just shared, what do you have to say just in one minute about this reality about us and our Father and even as Jesus being as Him now? Wow, thank you so much, Papa, again. Mm. I mean, you have shared a principle with us. Mm. That anything you see in the physical mm. is because it actually is in the spirit. Mm. You know, and in Genesis chapter one, you have shared with us that a lot of the principles of the scriptures, usually the foundations are in Genesis. Mm. In Genesis chapter one, verse eleven, it says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, mm. the herb yielding seed, mm. and the fruit yielding fruit after his kind, mm. whose seed is in itself mm. upon the earth, and it was so. Mm. So, a fundamental principle was laid mm. here. So, that is why if you grow oranges, mm. you produce orange mm. or, 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 or oranges. So, God laid that principle right in Genesis. Mm. So, if we say our Father is divine, mm. so we are divine, we are only emphasizing what the scripture has said. So, as for this spiritual genetics, mm. I'm sure these are just scratching the surface. Mm. And do, do, do those who land at the Accra International Conference mm. Center, we are going to dig deeper and mm. deeper into these into these matters. I'm so blessed. Hallelujah. Yeah. This is just the beginning. Pastor Gani, any oh. conclusive words? Wow, you know, thank you along so this much, line. Seth. Your, your, your introduction alone is what <laughs> took us off today, but that's what the Lord wants us to share today. All right? Do. Oh, thank you so much, Seth, for the opportunity. Mm. You see, what our Father will be proud of Mm. is when we really know ourselves as we ought to. Mm. If not, he wouldn't have taken time in the Mm. scriptures to tell us over and over and over again that he gave back to Mm. us. So God is more excited Mm. when we know ourselves Mm. as God begotten. Mm. That is our true selves. Mm. God is more excited when you know yourself as God begotten. Are you done? So the Bible says that mm. henceforth know we no man after, after the, the flesh. flesh. So you shouldn't know yourself as such if you're a child mm. of God. And that is why you ought to be at the new creation mm. conference. Because God is continuing to unfold to us who we really are mm. as his children. Mm. And he'll be more excited when we know and we behave as such. Hallelujah. Our yes. Father will be more excited when we know and we behave as such. You see, there's just one thing. When you discover that you are born by God and you are born from God. It will change your whole world. There are things we say today. Why should it be thought impossible that a spirit can do what the Father is doing? It's because largely many people think that they are still human. And as humans, they are suffering and struggling and they are just calling on Jesus to come. He is not going to come like that. <laughs> emergency <I'm>, coming. <laughs> there is no emergency coming by Jesus. I told you over and again, if you have packed up to go already without maturing, just relax. Start preparing yourself by these kind of messages. There's so much to share. And I believe that when we take off uh, through the weekend editions and I mean take off again on Monday with another session of the NCC Hub Discussions, you are going to get much more. But suffice it to say now, with all that you are hearing, where else are you going to be? On the 14th and the 15th of November, Thursday and Friday, make sure you are at an uh, Accra International Conference Center, 5.30 p.m. each of the evening. Hallelujah. Praise God. You have to be born again. You were born by a man and a woman. But before you were even conceived by that man and woman, you were known from God before you became a conceptus. And there was a plan for your life. The plan was that you first be born as a man. And then you'll be born again as a son of God. So if you're watching me now or reading or hearing, depending on the platform, it means that you are a human, which means that you have been born. You must be born again. What does it take to be born again? Receive the truth of the word that Jesus is the son of God who came to die for the sins of the world, reconcile mankind to God, and he rose again, and today he's Lord. If you receive that truth, you believe it, Instantly, you become born again. You become a son of God. Your belief in Christ makes you born again. The Bible says that for by grace are we saved through faith. Your belief that Jesus is Lord is what makes you born again. Do you believe? If you do, instantly you've been born again. But I can help you make a confession that will establish this reality in your consciousness. Say this with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I do believe that you are the son of God who came into this world 
died, was raised from the dead, ascended to heaven, and you are Lord. I declare you Lord of my life. Hallelujah. And that with all your heart, truly, you are born again. This has been today's session of the NC Hub Discussion with esteemed Reverend Dr. Ms. Mabuposari. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much, sir. You've been very excellent. Thank you. And then, Pastor Dr. William Kwesi, again, thank, thank you so you, much sir, for, for coming. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Surely, I'm going to come your way again in our next episode. But till then, life is good. Enjoy. Thank you for listening to the Word Podcast with Dr. David Bindan. Join us again for the next episode.